Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are many uh, misconceptions about uh, what the United States really is, and uh, these mis misconceptions can, uh, if they're believed in, they become truth. And so, let me start that with my main claim. My main claim is increasing democratic reform is destructive to the core American philosophy of individual liberty. And I will show this how the United States is a republic, how the United States is not a democracy, and how dictators can use democracy to rise to power. Um, with the United States being a republic, in Article 4, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution, it says verbatim, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government, and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or the executive against domestic violence. Now, the term republican within that clause of the U.S. Constitution doesn't mean the party. This was written before the Republican Party was ever invented. The term republican is the po political philosophy, a representative form of public a representative form of government and republic. Um, this is no surprise because the founding fathers, when they drafted the Constitution, they uh, got their political philosophy from an English philosopher, John Locke. And um, he even used some of John Locke's own rhetoric in, uh, in the Declaration of Independence that the role of government is to assure individual li liberties, such as life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men driving the just powers and the consent of governed. And that's strictly from the Declaration of Independence. And uh, so, the whole basis of the Republic is based off um, limited governments. Um, so, if the United States is a Republic, then it's not a democracy. Um, unlike in the Constitution, the word uh, Republic is directly found in there, democracy is not found a single time in the entire Constitution. Uh, no allusion to it either. Um, and now the point is, if there was a democracy, there would be no Senate. Um, and indeed, this also goes back to the political philosophy of the Founding Fathers. Um, the Founding Fathers felt that democracy would eventually fail to accomplish the goals of preserving individual liberties. John Adams, and John Adams is quoted to say, Democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There is never a democracy that did not commit suicide. And the reason they felt democracy would fail to preserve individual rights is because eventually, essentially, democracy is 51% <coughs> suppressing 49% of the population. Um, a modern example, Proposition 8. There you have a group of people voting against and persecuting the individual rights of a minority group. Um, that's a modern working example right there. Um, and, since it, and this goes into my third point, that dictators can use democracy to rise in power. And I'll use a historical example of Rome. Um, in the beginning, Rome was a prosperous republic, but since the senators had all the political power and had no oversight, the senators were able to democratize the republic. And, um, and so the age of Roman imperialism follows after this, consequently, uh, consequently uh, dictators and, and whatnot, the Caesars. Um, as it is infamously said in Rome, he who controls the mob controls Rome. And um, Professor Barba F. Uh, McManus at the College of New Rochelle, um, in her site about Rome, uh, the Roma.org, said this concerning the government that a straight ladder shows a t uh, she said about concerning Roman government, she said that the straight ladder shows the typical path of advancement, advancement beginning with an election to quest or the lowest office and proceeding to consul the highest. So basically, uh, the Roman government was just a single ladder of advancement. Unlike the modern U.S. Uh, Republic, where it's three separate branches of legislative, ju judicial, and executive. Um, so the founding fathers learned from Rome's mistake and thus divided the, the uh, powers, the powers and duties into three distinct branches of government. Um, the, Rom the Roman public did not have this division of power, so that's how, that's how the uh, certain senators were able to gain complete control and eventually the rise of the Caesars. Um, another, another difference is that the Roman Republic was a loose republic in which um, during times of extreme danger it allowed itself 
it, the Constitution was actually allowed to be overthrown and dictators were either accidentally or directly elected. Um, the United States Republic, though, our Constitution did not allow this, that no matter under any circumstances, um, the Constitution now shall not be violated. And of course, there have been times in U.S. history where the United States presidents have uh, completely violated the Constitution. Um, <coughs> and that's the, that, and that's the historical example of Rome, how um, democracy can lead to, to dictators. And so it is that the United States citizens have two choices. Well, here's my conclusion, first of all. Democ democratic reform will destroy the liberties of citizens. Um, from turning a republic into a democracy, because that eventually leads to dictators. Um, but, and so it is that the U.S. citizens have two choices, democracy or freedom.